this series is such a feast for the eyes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for saying so. I love that. How did you ensure that the series remained true to Tolkien's mm. style? Um, Great question. Lovely question. Yeah. Um, so JD, my co-writer, and I, you know, from the very beginning of this process, uh, um, the, the, the rule was go back to the books. Go back to the books. Go back to the books. And sometimes that's going for specific information, right? What color armor do you know, people wear in this part of the world? Uh, you know, what were hobbits or a version of hobbits doing at this time in the world? Um, but it's also about really trying to absorb into every, you know, cell of your body what is important to Tolkien? What are his themes? What were the messages that you know, you know, he was fascinated by? Um, what are the emotional registers that his storytelling plays in? Um, and then, and then, hopefully, try to honor that. Um, and and if if people feel like you know, in some fashion or sometimes we succeeded, that would really mean the world to us. Yeah, and I, you know, I, it's so great to hear you say that specifically about beauty because beauty is such a big part of Tolkien. And you know, we were lucky to work with um, a group of amazing Tolkien experts. Um, mm -hmm. We worked with the Tolkien Estate and Simon Tolkien, who's a consultant on the show, um, and additionally a bunch of other uh, big scholars in this world. Tom like, Shippey, who yeah. you know has his chair at Oxford, you know, uh, uh, who's like, does our translations. He's sort of the world you know authority on the languages. Um, uh, Daniel Reeve and Daniel Falconer um, and uh, John Howe. I can't forget. For no. for fans of this material and <clears throat> fans of these books, like you know, every single one of these scenes, every one of these cultures, every one of these worlds, every costume is just packed with um, you know detail that has just come right out of them. Um, and and there's a lot more still in there that we haven't touched yet. There are so many characters to enjoy in this, and some of them are new to the to you know, lovers of yeah. the Lord of the Rings and, and Tolkien, mm. how did you come up with them? Uh, so once again, going back to the books, we found all of these, you know, incredible suggestions of, you know, like the Harfoots I mentioned, you know, uh, uh, Tolkien has this whole chapter concerning hobbits. And in this chapter, he talks about, you know, what happened long ago in their wandering days, long before they had the Shire. And, you know, Harfoots were one of these branches and here's what they looked like and here's what they cared about. And, you know, from, you know, a, a, a paragraph or two, you know, a whole world sprang up, right? You know, we, we thought about, um, you know, what are the hobbits we know in the Third Age when the later books and films are set? Um, Frodo and Bilbo and Sam, and what do you associate with them? Well, there's loyalty, bravery, um, and courage, um, you know, uh, uh, um, but they're also small and vulnerable and, and thinking about, well, maybe where did that come from? And sort of doing like a, you know, cultural, you know, archaeology <laughs> um, and then, and then you know, finding details like, you know, the, the wheels on the carts the Harfoot have, uh, the Harfoots carry around, um, match the round doors that maybe one day they'll have uh, at the Shire if they ever make it. Um, you know, so, so we did that with every single culture. You know, there's the Southlands. The Southlands is a, a, a kingdom of men. Um, but it's the dark years for men in Middle Earth, which, you know, Tolkien gives us in the appendices. And so you try and imagine, like, well, what did that look like? Um, you know, Tolkien talks about Numenor as, like, you know, the most amazing kingdom uh, uh, of, of men. And so you, you go, well, okay, if we know that is like this, what would this be like? And um, really, we, we, we saw ourselves as archaeologists in a way, like, you know, trying to, trying to dig up the fossils that Tolkien left there, um, rather than create anything new, if that makes sense. I love the Harfoots. They're like my oh. favorite characters. Oh my God, aren't they wonderful? Yes. <laughs> um, what would you say is the biggest difference between the series and the movies? Well, I think the fact they're set in the Second Age, you know, it's thousands of years before mm -hmm. the events um, of the Third Age. And so it's, it's completely different, a completely different time in the civilizations of Middle Earth. And that gave us, I think, a lot of, um, as in the story obviously is from, is from the appendices in the books and uh, the writing the writing team was was busy excavating all of that, but as, as it related to adapting everything to what you see on screen, it gave our artists and craftspeople a lot of room to explore a new look and a new tone and a new feel. Um, still needed to feel like Middle Earth, and the thing we always talked about was that it should feel different but familiar. It should feel like Middle Earth, but a new Middle Earth, a wilder Middle Earth, um, because it's in a completely different time. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, there's so many examples like this we could point to, but immediately my mind goes to um, um, Galadriel, right? Yeah. Um, she's played in our show by the amazingly talented Welsh actress um, Morbeth Clark. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, in the films and in the books, you know, fans have encountered her as 
the wise ethereal lady of the woods who's offering pearls of wisdom and gentle guidance. And, um, you know, uh, 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 um, in our show, she's sort of, you know, the driving obsessed, you know, uh, uh, warrior in a way. She's younger. Um, she's not quite formed yet. She's raw. She's making mistakes. Um, and that all comes from a similar process of looking at everything the books tell us about Galadriel and the things she says. And you know, Frodo offers her the ring and she says, I really want that ring. You know, but I can't take it because if I did, it would take me and I'd become evil. And that is so extraordinary. We found that so fascinating that someone who is at that point many thousands of years old still felt that temptation, which means, boy, she must have really seen some shit. <laughs> Excuse my French. Um, you know, and, and from that is trying to imagine, well, who might she have been a few thousand years before that? Um, you know, so that necessarily makes it different. But that's a journey that, you know, hopefully audiences will want to go on is seeing where did she attain that wisdom? How did she fall to be able to stand, you know? I wish I could ask you so many more questions because I have so many about the show, oh, but I, my time has run out. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. Thank you for this series. I can't wait to see the rest of it. Oh my God, Thank there's you. a lot That's more to come. So nice. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel or if you're returning, but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, tap it now, plus the notification bell in the top right-hand corner so you make sure you don't miss out on any new celebrity interviews. Also, hit the like button and tell me below in the comments, who's your favorite star? Who would you like to see me interview next? I'd love to hear from you.